Evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you just had a chance to watch the 2022 Polaris Mountain release. That product is so cool. Uh, my cordless mic quit, so I apologize. I got to be tethered to this thing. Uh, but we I wanted to kind of cover some of the nuts and bolts. Now we've been on a, an embargo. We couldn't really talk about this stuff. Been out riding this stuff and had some exposure to it. Pretty excited. Want to tell you my impressions. <clears throat> what the product as I understand it, some of the things you guys are going to want to know, some of the details. So let's get down to it. 2022 Matrix uh, is RMK or Chaos. Some of this is a little bit confusing, but let me just make sure you get it. 2022 Matrix can be RMK or Chaos. So that's kind of the same things you guys have always known or for the past few years with respect to the geometry of the Chaos and RMK. Uh, Starfire is a denotion or, or tries to delineate the snow check only product from any confusion uh, on, on your end. So Starfire means that you cannot get this unless it is in that Starfire line and it is exclusive to that. Uh, and inside that line, you'll find products such as Slash and Boost. So we'll talk about what those things mean. But first, I just wanna say overall, the matrix is everything that you guys have been asking for. We, as a rider group have been asking for from a manufacturer for a long time and here we go so matrix features um, this chassis was designed primarily to focus weight closer to the rider move things in so that it's more dynamic that you're going to hear that <clears throat> you may have heard that in some of the video but ultimately what that means is that less rider input with a better reaction and more reactivity uh quicker so more intuitive but people are saying, hey, how does this thing relate to Axis? What is it like? If you, if you haven't had a chance to talk to somebody that's been on one, let me just, let me just shoot straight here. The, the overall architecture of Matrix versus Axis is, essential, is essentially identical. So what that means is a steering post placement did not move forward, contrary to what some of the people say and, and whatnot. It's exactly the same angle and exactly the same position with regard to its, its placement on the snowmobile. The uh, suspension, both front and rear, are essentially the same. Uh, mounting points, roll points, centers are all exactly the same. So you guys with you know your carbon skid or whatever, that's gonna bolt right into the matrix. That's the magic sauce of the matrix is like I said, moving <clears throat> more rider centric. And I don't know if that resonates, but what that means is essentially, uh, for instance, if you look at tunnel now on matrix, right? It's shorter. People are like, oh, where's the cut tunnel? Oh, we got the cut tunnel. We have two varieties of that. So we'll go there first. You have slash, which we'll talk about a little bit more, and matrix slash, I'm sorry, matrix and matrix slash. Now that, uh, don't let that confuse you too much, <clears throat> but matrix on its own is shorter already than what you're accustomed to with axis. And by that, it's about three and a half inches or so shorter. And the bumper is also moved forward and up above the tail light. So it's something we've been asking for for a long time. You don't have to take off your stock bumper and throw in a trash can, it's actually really good. So moving on to slash, it's another uh, three and a half, I believe, inches shorter than standard matrix. And, what, and, and also just to clarify, both of them, all the matrix line now has a shorter cooler system. Now there, there's two individual coolers, one, located underneath the gas tank and seat area and the other wrapping around the front drive and they're they're both uh chambered uh internally and externally extruded coolers and the matrix slash has a shorter cooler than uh standard matrix and and so so let me just say that to you guys that have been running cut tunnel you're gonna love the slash you'll love the matrix but cut tunnel guys uh, that have been accustomed to dealing with maybe some of the compromises in terms of cooling, you're going to find that Slash definitely uh, definitely fits that bill. So let's just say there. We'll, we'll, we'll go past that. Um, so on top of that, Matrix has massive cockpit changes to the, the way that you can interact with the sled. You have much more room. Everything is moved farther forward. And, and, and I'm saying that with regard to the dash panels uh, and, and things that you would otherwise interact with in normal riding. And so you're, you'll be able to bypass the, the, the dash for instance is no longer perpendicular to the, to, the, to the sled, but rather slanted forward. And in doing that, you have much more opportunity to move past those uh, dash panels without 
running into them with your knees and whatnot. So you have more room. And, 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 and another thing that you can't really tell from a lot of the video or pictures, but the gas tank is, is pushed forward a little bit. Um, gas cap, things like that are moved forward to get out of the way to not encumber movement forward as well, but it's also much narrower. And as that profile is narrower, the tunnel edges are nipped as well. So things are kind of pushed in as far as you can physically and maintain the dimensional need for, you know, track clearance and whatnot. And, and what that does is, is when you're, when you're on the sled and you're pushing on one, we call it peg weighting in the motorsports world, but when you push on one or the other peg weight, you don't have to, you don't feel the inside of your leg as getting pushed away by the, the fuel cell and the tunnel interaction. So you'll find that to be very a very cool feature as you as you ride this more. You can stay neutral, don't have to go wrong foot forward as much. Um, easier to ride and ultimately a whole bunch more fun. And that's really what this is about. So we, we talked about tunnel being shorter, the new cooling system, the compacting, the seat is lower, the seat is shorter. Um, new tunnel storage system, so your old bags won't work, but they are a new lock and ride system that are really cool. Um, the Slash doesn't have, I guess, essentially what you would customarily know as a snow flap. It has a horizontal flap-ish that sticks back. Um, maybe looks a little bit like a, uh, almost like a timber sled riot in the rear, but maybe that's a poor example. The tunnels are tapered on Matrix and even more uh, aggressively on Slash. So uh, tunnel taper. And, and then you'll notice that there's a narrowing towards the rear of it as well. Very, very cool design. So tapered, shorter, new bumper, new snow flap, stronger um, bumper, um, makes the whole chassis more dynamic and responsive, things like that. So uh, some of the other things that everybody's been asking for that are just little details that we're really stoked about, tethers, standard. Should have been a long time ago, finally is. Um, uh, let's see, so we've got different track options, right? You guys are familiar with 2.6 and 3.0. Some of you had 2.75 this year. The 2.75 is improved for 2022. It is incorporating uh, extroverted drivers as well as an anti-stab. So that's dual extrovert in, a, in a, a system very similar to what you would have seen with Avid or a lot of the sleds that we've built here <clears throat> that utilize a dual wheel anti-stab on the front of the rail and then extroverted drivers. And they also inc improve the durability of the track. So people are going to really like that. I think the 275 um, maybe didn't get off on a great start, but we are digging it. The thing is, is light, it's dynamic, it floats pretty good. Um, so definitely cool and comes with, like I said, some, some trick stuff. So let's see here. We talked about Matrix, new platform, Chaos. Same as last year, essentially uh, architecturally. Starfire, snow check only. Slash. Slash is being touted as factory mod. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. It's got Slash offers some other features like the carbon overstructure that you've seen on some of the, the limited stuff before is going to be standard on Slash. So it's a lighter weight snowmobile that has a shorter tunnel and a shorter heat exchanger. It will heat a little bit worse on trail and stuff like that. So if you're a guy that doesn't like paying attention to that or running with scratchers down or, or whatever, um, then maybe that's not not your huckleberry but uh, moving past that uh let's see there uh okay so i, I made these notes i keep looking down because i made some notes right here and, and they're really kind of funny because my impressions are takeaway of matrix to access when i wrote them back to back similar conditions things like that um the matrix is just more fun and and i want to like say that that's why we do this right we spend an obscene amount of money and we don't need to get into to, to that but we spend a lot of money on this sport and we do it because it's fun in the end of the at the end of the day if we're not all having fun why the heck are we doing this so matrix is a lot more fun than axis it's easier to ride it's more fun it's more dynamic it's more reactive slash being shorter lighter it's even more fun so we're just gonna kind of let that soak for a while. Now, Slash is Starfire product and Slash is available in Boost. Yeah, Boost. We'll get to that. Um, so let's talk about some of the other things that improved. 22 gets brand new engine management. What is that all about? Well, it's, it's new high resolution um, engine management. It's a high resolution stator rotor 
the thing that you'll instantly notice is that 850NA or natural, naturally aspirated, is you'll notice a massive improvement in engine acceleration and response. The responsiveness of the motor is much quicker and to the tune of approximately 20% quicker engine um, response. So I don't know if you can imagine how we might measure that, but if you can, um, it's connectivity to the rider input. And so that's something that when I first rode 850 NA, I was taken back. I thought for sure I was riding a big bore. If any of you have ridden uh, any of my 911s or maybe a Carl's 900, something like that, you'll first thing you'll notice isn't necessarily gross horsepower, though there's more abundant horsepower, it is rippier, right? So that term, rippier, like a snowcross motor maybe, um, you're going to notice that in 850 NA uh, in matrix for 2022 it's significant so riding a 21 to a 22 big difference so those are just a couple couple things that i think are worth talking about um some minor improvements i mentioned tether um cool features uh slash has like well in the past we've had those tow hooks right either loved them or hated them some people cut them out those were actually a structural component when 22 was designed, the tow hooks are no longer structural. They also can be moved to three positions, the lowest of which would be the same as what we had on previous axis. Um, and so a 22 matrix, you'll be able to either remove them or run them in that position or two positions higher, should that be a concern. Uh, so that's been talked about. Um, another cool feature available, 7S display. Uh, it's a, it's like the coolest thing. I I'm, was blown away at how easy the interface was, um, how easy it is to connect unit to unit and how you can keep track of your buddies. And so, uh, one of the, uh, on one of our rides, we were paired up because not allowed to go alone. Right. <laughs> um, lost my buddy. Wasn't really sure where he was probably in an area we shouldn't have been. Um, nevertheless, I remembered that. Uh, and, and the thing absolutely, uh, was so simple. You can tap on it, tells you exactly where your friends are. You got satellite, you got 3d imagery and, uh, topography and delineated topography. So super easy to use, super easy. Just, I loved it. I thought it truly is likely the future. Plus you can send messages, which are cool. There's some pre-programmed ones, or you can, you can make some, but anyway, you can send messages sled to sled. You know where your, your buddies are all the time. Uh, and it doesn't, it's not like the PID. I hated the PID gauge, thought it was a waste of money. In fact, strongly advise people not to buy it. Uh, and, and so those of you who know me know that I'll tell the truth. If I, if it, if it sucks, I tell you it sucks. I think it's an amazing product and my exposure to it was, was, uh, was, was limited, but enough to know that I wouldn't go without one. So got a battery, stays on, uh, tracks GPS. You could touch it anytime. There's, you know, push updates to it, things, things like that as well. But um, I think you'll really dig it. You can set the gauge up so that it reads whatever you want, including, you know, either with or without topo on the main screen or with, you know, RPMs and, and say engine temperature, other different, um, things you might be wanting to keep an eye on. So, um, speed and tracking trips and, and obviously things like that. There's some safety features there too, for not, <clears throat> not ending up lost. So cool product 7S. Trying to make this as quick as I can, but I really want to get down to some of the things that people ask me. Uh, Matrix can and does use the very same geometry A arms and shock lengths. So um, there are some new offerings, but uh, so 22 Matrix, yes, you can use your 19 and newer React aftermarket front ends on it. Um, yes, you can use your shocks from previous years. They fit both front and rear. So it's important to know Rear skid geometry is essentially identical. Um, and so shocks will fit. Um, your old carbon skids will fit, stuff like that. So we kind of talked about that. Uh, just very, very cool. You'll notice that when you get on it, there's a, there's a particular familiarity about this. And so that's one of the first things you'll be like, wow, this thing feels like home when you're on it. If you're a player scout, you've been riding an axis and you're digging it and everything you've ever thought about that you wished it had, this has got. So more room to move, lighter, more dynamic, more fun, and but all the same input. There's nothing new to learn, um, just 
much better. So people say, like, is it like Pro was to Axis? Or, and I would say that dynamically in terms of the chassis reactivity and, and how much better it feels, it's like Dragon to Pro. It's bigger than Axis, Pro to Axis, okay? It's bigger than that. But the familiarity is, is there. So rideability, bigger step than Pro to Axis. Familiarity is going to be a, just remarkably similar. So you'll, you'll love that about it, just everything else about it. The sled, though, I, I don't know what the final weights are in production. And when I made this video is before the release, they may have talked about that. I don't know. But um, I can say that an impre my impression is that the sled feels 20 or, or 30 pounds lighter, just in stock form. And hands down, a hoot to ride. You, you, you won't believe how much more rideable it is. So a couple... Uh, couple other things. So we're going to talk about boost. Boost's a big deal. And, and that's probably to a lot of us in the performance world, particularly at high altitude, that's the big takeaway here, right? Polaris comes with a factory turbo, but this is not just a factory turbo. Take it from the guy that's building. I, I've, I mean, the guy rolled the first turbo mountain sled with EFI on it at the Denver show in 2004, in October, 2005 M7. Uh, We've come a long way, man. And this is stuff that we dreamed of having. And by that, I mean technologically. Um, th there is some new technology on here that we'll, we'll get into, but it's remarkable what this thing achieves in terms of gross performance. So uh, in, in stock trim, we're exceeding uh, competitors' horsepower numbers at 10,000 feet by more than 40, 45 horsepower. So... Um, those of you guys, in fact, I'll, I can say it, I'm not paid by anybody and, and I, and I really have a lot of respect for the other manufacturers could do that's made a turbo. I think it's fantastic that they did that and really was a welcome thing to see in the market. Um, but the, the Polaris has significantly more power, um, like 30% more power. So at altitude, uh, even significantly more power at, at sea level. So that's, it's a really cool feature of a turbo. A turbo has the capacity to compensate for altitude, right? As, as you lose air, you essentially pack more in there. Um, the Polaris turbo is such that you can run the same clutching at sea level as you run when you go out to Brant's. So this has been an ask of everybody, man, I want a turbo. So I love how they run out West, but they're such a pain to get right at sea level. And they don't offer as much of an advantage because you can't lean on them. You're already starting out with, you know, with quite a lot more pressure, right? So we all know that you're in the 14s down there and you're, you're in the nine high, high nines and, and low tens here. So, uh, you already have about a four, four and a half pound differential when you come there. So what we did here was not just add that four and a half pounds. And, and so I don't know if they talked about numbers, but I, I believe the capacity of the system is, is close to nine pounds or just over nine pounds, depending on the altitude. So it's a pretty significant gain. Uh, guys that have been running around an 850 turbo probably know the power that's capable, but have dealt with other runnability issues and, 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 and the lack of precise control to, to deal with some of those things that's all been handled. So that, so obviously the, the, the boost benefits from the advantages of the new high resolution electronics and engine management system. So that's pretty darn exciting. Um, they, let's see, turbo, you probably noticed had a new clutch. Uh, the clutch is, uh, it's, it's a cool clutch, got a center bearing similar to what cat has. And, and so what that does for you is you don't have to adjust belt tension anymore. Um, that's cool. Runs as tight as it can all the time. Belt life will improve. Um, we still have QD1, QD2 offerings, and that's a, a choice that you can make, um, as well as those other tracks I said, 2.6. I'm trying to break down a lot of information in a short period of time and give you my impressions. But um, get, get, QD2 was a big hit with guys that like to bang around in the woods and, and stuff and don't really care about top speed. Um, QD1, better for you guys that you know, haul butt down the trail sometimes. So particularly in your higher, higher boost configurations. And, and obviously, um, we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about the turbo. The turbo is a big turbo. It's not a small turbo. That was one of the things that, that, that came out. People said, oh, they'll just put a little turbo on it, maybe give it four and a half pounds. Not the case. This is a large compressor, a large turbo. 
It's super lightweight. Why? Because they were able to build a turbo specifically for snowmobile application. This turbo has an aluminum center section, liquid cooled, oiled aluminum center section. That is an industry first, very specific to snowmobile. Um, it has a very lightweight exhaust housing, something that would not work on an automobile, but will absolutely work on a snowmobile. Uh, it's a reverse scroll turbo. What's that mean? That means it's not mounted in a conventional fashion and you don't feed it in a conventional fashion. The turbo actually spins backwards of the way a typical turbo in the automobile industry and every former snowmobile turbo works. So it's a reverse scroll. Um, you'll notice that it's mounted uh, vertically. So the, uh, the vertical turbo reverse scroll is fed um, off the stinger conventionally but you probably notice some things different. First of all, it looks very clean, looks very simple. That turbo is flange mounted to the top of the resonator. That, that, that muffler is a twin chamber muffler and <clears throat> there is, it, it actually has the diffusers in, in the silencer. So that's pretty cool. So it has two separate chambers. There is a little bit of crosstalk. They exit out two individual outlets. And so the outlet's oval shaped. There's some advantages to deep snow runnability there too. Uh, but the, the coolest part about this and the thing that we missed many years ago that, uh, that Polaris managed to do and patent <laughs> is the capacity to regulate pipe pressure. And so that's a big deal. So it modulates pipe pressure with the wastegate. It is something that, man, we've monitored it, logged it and spent a lot of time thinking about it, but never thought about dumping it out the side of, of the, uh, of, of the center section or convergence cone portion of the pipe. So that's a huge advantage. And that was, uh, that's really the magic sauce here. So, uh, this is some technology that's never been done. It's controlled by the same actuator that, that controls the, the exhaust valves on a, on a regular access or matrix. So there are essentially two of those servo motors, one controlling exhaust valves, one controlling uh, pipe pressure and, and wastegate. And, and, and so that's, uh, that's kind of a big deal. And so to the tech guys, you'll, you'll want to think about that for a while. Now there is also an intake bypass system in the airbox. Uh, it's very large, very cool. The, the, the way this system functions in a nutshell to you, the rider is you're going to notice, um, little or no effect of having the turbo with regard to runnability. Anybody who's rode a Skidoo probably knows they, they have a bypass system as well. I, I believe the player is a little superior to that. Um, the intake system is a little cleaner and the old, the entire uh, install is a little bit simpler. <clears throat> less junctures, less places for, for leaks and things of that nature. Very cool new stuff. Uh, cool like aluminum V-band fittings that, that, that fasten the airbox to the throttle bodies and, and just a, a lot of really, really trick things that I wish we could have built in the aftermarket years ago, but, but couldn't. Um, so anyway, is, uh, back to that, the turbo is big enough. Um, people are like, man, you're going to put a bigger turbo on it. No, we don't need a bigger turbo. We will have some tricks up our sleeve. I'm not going to tip any cards, but give us a call. Um, uh, let's see. So the talked about saying clutching electronic wastegate actuator, able to modulate boost from sea level all the way up to 12,000 feet, um, back to the response. So with the, the intake bypass that it has, it has. I, uh, th this is no BS. You'll, you'll see when you ride them, the, the 22 matrix boost has the same response, virtually no discernible difference on the bottom end as a stock 21 axis 850. So if you're like, man, I don't want to give up that stock reviness and rippiness on the bottom, you don't have to. And that's the, that's the coolest part of the technologies and the way that they're all married. There's just a lot more control, a lot more precise control and the capacity to do things that, that we couldn't do before. Yes, they have auxiliary injectors. The auxiliary injectors are backed up in the intake track, which offer obviously the benefit of cooling and whatnot. But all of these things play to being able to have high horsepower, have that high horsepower traject all the way up in altitude uh, with, with, with a nominal drop off. Um, the, the, you know, after maybe 11,000 feet. So pretty significant, um, step forward technologically in, in, in this running pump gas. Um, <clears throat> obviously, uh, uh, we, 
<laughs> people are people have asked me a couple of questions about whether we run eth or non eth. It's going to be similar program, obviously. Two strokes prefer to run non eth, but we don't need to get into that battle. Um, ethanol is all we can get most places, and we're aware of that. So development moved that direction, and and that's that's obviously an option too. So a um, couple other fun facts: the matrix. Or, okay, somebody somebody shot me a message. Is the new sled going to be like the Matrix Trail? And obviously I couldn't answer, but I can answer now. No, it's not. It doesn't share the side panels. It doesn't share the fenders. It doesn't share the footwell convergence. None of that's the same. Uh, the, it does share the hood. The, just the center section of the hood is the same. Um, aside from that, it is six inches narrower than Matrix Trail. Six inches narrower bodywork than Matrix Trail. I think that's worth noting. So no, it's not. It, it's not Matrix Trail. They're meant to 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 achieve the same thing, and the development teams use the same terminology because that's the goal. Um, anyway, Matrix Boost is approximately 23 pounds lighter than your popular aftermarket Boost systems. So specific to the weight of all the componentry that goes onto the sled to achieve a Boost versus an NA. Uh, will add, uh, I think it's approximately 18 pounds to its equivalent NA sled. That's a pretty paltry gain if you start comparing it to what you gain when you when you when you bolt on some of our other systems. So, um, and, and a lot of that's achieved by having the components specific or sharing components mounting being, you know, part of that as well. Um, the lightweight center section, the turbo is extremely lightweight. Uh, things things like that. So that all attributed to making the system super light so that the sled can stay playful and fun and people don't feel like it's a it's a tank. So we got narrow, lots of room in the cockpit, more dynamic chassis, all the weight pushed closer towards you, more fun, lighter, shorter, more power, all those things wrapped up into this. It's truly remarkable that all of this came together on a year when all the competitors uh, and e e even ones that I, I'm a dealer for, like Articat, that changed literally nothing. So this is a huge change. It's everything you guys have been asking for. I, uh, I don't know what else to say about that, but when it comes to questions, there's going to be, is there is, is going to be sufficient power? Um, I think that I'll say to the people who've been running, say, Sidekick 800s, this is significantly better power than Sidekick 800. Um, is it gonna run with our intercooled straight hundred high pressures? No, not on pump gas, it's not. Th those are running another 40 or so horsepower. However, I'll throw a shameless plug in here. <clears throat> we developed and have been developing this product called the Voke VTI, uh, Voke Tune Interface. This tool enables us to, uh, to tune remotely, uh, and to receive data logs, CSV data from, uh, from machines independently and, and, and remotely, I mean. So this is a cool tool and this is the tool that we're gonna use to make changes to the guys who wanna take the, the matrix boost to the next level. And are we gonna be able to achieve those horsepowers? Yes, that and more. And we've got stuff in the works, really excited, but we're not gonna talk about that stuff yet. But what we will talk about is that VTI and tunes will be available um, early um, and development is, is already well underway. So we're excited for what the future has to bring. But guys, this is the coolest thing. And to have a manufacturer step up and make these many specific mountain changes to answer the questions and needs and concerns that everybody's been asking for for as long as they have, um, this is a big deal. And especially given the year. So they are limited and I wanna say that this isn't a, this isn't um, some scare tactic. Uh, I, I don't know the numbers and, and I won't quite yet, but they're, they are limited enough that I believe that within the first 24 hours of snow check, they'll probably be, be gone. So don't waste too much time making that decision. If you're interested, pull the trigger. Um, pricing will be whatever pricing is. I honestly don't know at this time. I hope I didn't miss anything. Um, man, looking forward. I'd, People say, what am I going to ride? I'm going to ride a, I'm going to ride a 22 Matrix, Starfire, RMK, Slash, Boost. And I'm going to choose a 55, and I'm still on the fence whether to do a 275 or a 3-inch personally. But I dig them both. Um, hey, another cool thing. They finally built a true 
short track mountain sled short being relative uh, they did a 146 actual 146 narrow slash 850 uh, in a 26 that was a fun fun sled to ride so anybody that wants to jib around and wheelie most of the time and get stuck a lot that might be your huckleberry so uh, hopefully that's everything guys thanks for tuning in hit me up with questions i'm happy to answer i know i missed a ton of the really cool stuff i'm sorry it's a lot to remember and a lot to pack into a tiny video that'll keep you guys interested but it's going to be a fun year so take care thanks for tuning in see ya